Welcome guys, so this is the next episode in this Saima CM701 upgrade video that I'm doing. So we'll start with the cylinders first, because we need to get that handle off and get it on there. Basically, this is still, this is some aluminium-y type cylinder, just terrible, but that's fine, it's a clone. They're cheap, we know they're terrible. You know, if you, can, if you get a JG, sometimes they're all right and they're pinned so they can last a while, but these crimped ones are they they just fail it's just how quickly they fail so the first thing we'll do is just get the bolt handle off it's usually just an allen key so that just goes in there sometimes they do have some red thread lock on these um hold this under tension because in this section here facing that way there is a spring and a detent so if you keep it under tension when you're unscrewing it you can actually just put it all on in one swift motion uh you probably won't see it on camera but yeah there's there's loctite on that so again, keep it under tension. I like to do it with this chamfered section pointing up with this cutout. Hold it, take the old cylinder off, take your new one, and there'll be a flat face on it. So you can see that that flat face matches that cutout, which lines up with the flat on here, like so. Hold it under tension. If you've got a crush ring, I would suggest putting one on. The Simon doesn't come with it. Um, I know some bolt handles like the maple leaf will, so I haven't got any to hand, but there's still a load of thread lock on there. I might refresh it, but you put that on, make sure it works, and that's your cylinder. Before we talk about the piston, um, one thing that's worth mentioning is, despite a lot of misinformation out there, there are varying diameter cylinders. So most true TM spec manufactured cylinders will be 22.4 roughly in a diameter. Some cylinders, QC wise included, let's say they vary between 20, 21.8 to 22 maybe, um, but that 0.4 to 0.6 mil is enough for some pistons to not seal. So like the SSG cylinder is smaller than a typical VSR cylinder. So if you're buying something like a Wasp, there's two different cups to fit the two different cylinders and other little bits and bobs. So just be mindful of that. Maple leaf cylinders is what I've used here. Um, I got most of this, obviously some of this stuff's mine, some of it I got from Empire. This was just a low, a lower end of the budget build. Um, but I went for a standard maple leaf steel cylinder. Um, with This is one of their newer ones, uh, the receiver they do, which has the quick release function, which I quite like. Well done, maple leaf. But maple leaf stainless steel was is a good enough cylinder. They're pinned, they're strong. Um, they also do uh, a fluted one, which I much prefer over the Action Army one. And that's what I've got on one of my VSRs. And they do just a plain black one as well. And I think they've done like a dragon skinny type one. Um, but we're just going for the standard steel one because it's cheap and it does the job, does exactly what we need. So once you've got that, you're not gonna use any of this. You could use a cylinder head if you wanted, but all the internals are just plastic. You can see it's white off-white plastic and we're not going to use the spring either because that's a seven mil we're going to be bumping up to a nine mil so this can just get thrown to the side um, if you are using hba so if you don't go the spring route and you hba out like a mancraft or a bolt uh, you can keep that cylinder because you can use it i've already cleaned and degreased this sometimes you'll get these and they'll have some crap in them so just make sure you clean that out i've gone for a wasp the vsr version to match the diameter of this cylinder so depending on your exact build, you can tweak the, the what brake and weights you're going to use. But for me, for this build, I know what's going in it. So I'm just going to go with mid brake, mid weight. Assembly of the piston is you're going to need your guide rings out first, which will all come in a bag. So there'll be one guide ring specifically for the front. So whack that on, snug that down. Again, I know I'm going with the mid weight snug that on again you just hand tighten it for this one then you're gonna have rear guide ring again same process go ahead snug that bad boy on there then you want to take your sear so as per the trigger video this is a 90 degree sear the match of that 90 degree trigger even same thing you can just snuggle this down like so and i know i'm going for the mid length of the brakes so the rest of this can go to the side at the moment because I know he's staying at the full length. Brake goes in, no tools needed. I'm going to go for some silicon oil. Pop that around the edge of the cup. Massage it in. Then you want to flare the cup out as per the install video. That just sits over the lip on the piston body. Like so. 
Again, just give it a little flare. The reason I say flare it is because of the way they're molded. When the material contracts, it wants to pull in, and because they're kept in storage, they might get squashed, so I always recommend you just flare it out. I can feel that going in. So this uses nine mil or 13 mil springs. The measurements there being nine mil is the inner, 13 is the outer. I'm gonna start with a modify M140 spring. If I can get it out because I've got slippery fingers now. Hey ya, there we go. So if you've got any grease to hand, you can put a smidge of grease on this. Uh, I haven't got any to hand, so I'll take it apart and do it after the video, but a tiny bit of grease on the spring guide. Then grease nowhere else. Take your piston. Go ahead, put that on. Cylinder head wise, um, there's, I'm using my VSR damper head just because it matches perfectly with the Wasp, but things like the Lalac cylinder head's really good and the Action Army's fine. The SSG, to be fair, is all right. Um, the only one I would avoid is the Maple Leaf because it has a massive nozzle, um, which makes it very, very loud and brake. There's no air brakes currently that work with it. Just go ahead and put that on. And at this stage, you wanna go ahead and put a little bit of silicon oil on the O-ring. Then if you've got some needle nose pliers to put into these two holes on the cylinder, just so that you can get a really good grip on that and snug it down, like so. And then depending if you've already done the trigger bit, so we'll do the barrel and stuff next, but how you would normally test the seal at this stage, because you need to test the seal in two places, is when you've installed this, you want to put your thumb over the nozzle, cock it, and then fire it and see if it stops uh, or whether it judders or whether it just slams forward, um, or a lazy way to do it is you can just use something to pull the piston down. And you can see that I did no wizardry, no magic. You can see it's there. That'll hold all day long. So the next step will vary a little bit depending on the trigger, but essentially what you wanna do is you're gonna line this cut up at the bottom when you're putting it in the receiver. On a Springer Custom Works, I've left the spring guide stopper out. I have also put the spring guide stopper somewhere. But what you will do on a Springer Custom Works, so if you're following this build exactly, is you wanna hold the sear down. That basically gets it out of the way. And then you can take your cylinder, line this up with where the sear is gonna be. Try and get it past that guide ring at the front, which can sometimes be a bit of a pain. So. As annoying it is, I'm glad this has happened because sometimes people run into this and it blows their mind. So this has gone in as far as it seems like it will go in, right? The reason for that is this outer barrel has been put on far, far, far too tight from factory and it's squashing the front guide ring. And that basically means that you can't get the cylinder past it. Once you've got the cylinder in, it's less of an issue. But when you're trying to put it in for the first time, it can be a bit of a pain to do. So I didn't want to have to take this apart just yet, but I will. So depending on the VSR you have, you might have a hidden screw under here, but you'll almost certainly have a very, very small one there. So we're gonna start with that one first. This is a very, very, very small grub screw. So you wanna keep that to the side. And I can't twist this easy. And that's chances are there's another screw under there. So we're gonna quickly whip that off. Which I'm glad I took apart because they were very, very loosely in on this one. Normally they've got a bit of old red thread lock on them. So this is such a common thing that people destroy. You've got the four screw holes here for the rail, but you've got an additional tiny grub screw here and the amount of people that don't know that's there and they destroy the thread trying to get this off because they think it's just that one. So as annoying as that is, I'm glad it did happen because it reminded me to show you guys. So take that one off. Now you can loosen the outer barrel. And I forgot to mention, if you get a maple leaf cylinder, they usually they usually give you an extra guide ring. So you'll get one like this, which is sticky as hell. And you'll see that that is fine. It goes on absolutely fine until this goes on and it squashes it a bit. So in that instance, what you do is you just assemble it like this. That goes in. Then you can pop your guide ring over the front, like so. For this trigger, You've got your spring guide stopper here. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and pop that in, pop it down. Again, with the spring custom works, you've got this extra little screw, which is what keeps the spring guide stopper locked in place. So you can go ahead and tighten that up as well, like so. 
And then at this stage, fuck it. And then just give it a quick test. You can see that sealed immediately. So again, no wizardry, I'll do that again. So you'll see the piston here actually, hopefully on camera. If I can get a good angle. There you go. So it will hit it will stop, it will go forward a little bit just as the cup expands, and then that's it, it will stay there until you let it go. And at this stage, you would then do your hop upgrades. So your hop unit, barrel spacers, bucking, whatever you're going to do. But as far as the install goes, it's that easy. Everything's in place, bolt handle is fine, it's fairly smooth because I've done nothing to it, and that is sealing immediately. So that's it for that part. Again, the cylinder and the piston and everything is very, very easy part to do. The next video, we will move on to this. Remember though, very, 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 very important. And I, I cannot emphasize how many people have sent me rifles that are destroyed because of this. Always, always check if you've got that deceitful little grub screw hiding there. That one's easy enough to see. You're not gonna miss that one. But this one here, people miss that because it's under this rail. Obviously when you reinstall it, so do all this first, and then when you put it back together, install those grub screws. There are other tips that I would, I would usually do about guide rings and stuff, but that'll be an extra video at the end. Just little things that you can do to improve the sound and the bolt pull and things like that. So yeah, that's it. Depending on your barrel and stuff, you're gonna to wanna to change the brakes that you use or the weights. Um, I've gone over that loads and loads of times over lives and stuff and on my blog, so I'm not gonna keep going over it. But if you're using a standard length, middleweight middle brake is probably the easiest place to start with. If you're really techy and you get into ported cylinders um, and shortening your barrel and things like that, or if you're fine tuning it and you know you're only ever gonna use one weight, you can do a lot more experimentation with the weights and brakes. But for the average person, if you're using this barrel length, mid and mid if you're using short you can go long and heavy mid and heavy if you've for whatever reason gone very 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 long like a 510 which i think some of the clones do you're going to want to go for the short or no break and the lightest poly sleeve but this is a general good starting point um because everything after this even down to the spring affects which stuff you should use so it's very much a case of just experimenting which is why i say this is a this is a tex piston if you just want something to plug in that you're not going to have to worry with, mid and mid, mid break, mid weight, you'll be good to go. If you do like the, the nitty gritty, like short stroking, which I, doesn't really work very well for VSRs, but porting and things like that and matching volumes, that's when you can get into the weights. But for the, for the most part, for the average person, this is how you just install a piston, whether it is the Wasp or whether it is another upgrade piston out there from the likes of Airsoft Pro, Edgy, Action Army, etc. ESC works there's a number of companies out there that make stuff that's the general fitment of it and the general test of sealing but if you liked it remember to like share subscribe all of that stuff it helps keep me motivated because I need to be pandered to but any questions drop them in the comments or message me on Instagram I'm a lot more active on there than I am Facebook again thanks for watching hope it helps and I'll speak to you guys soon bye bye